All right, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the idea of naming objects. Um, this will cover uh, F1.5 in the textbook, assigning names to objects. So we talked about object properties before, and um, one of the properties that every object is going to have is a name. Uh, the name is really important because that's what that is what allows us to refer to the object when we're actually doing code. Um, the name essentially identifies that object as being unique. Uh, so we can't get it confused with any other objects of the same class. For example, um, in the teacher class example that I gave back in the first video for this week, uh, I had a name property myself you know me as a uh, as an instance of the teacher class i have a name however i talked about how that name would probably be my employee id and the reason why that would be is because if there is another teacher named iris Kohler, but let's say she was working in the biology department instead uh if the name that we were referred to in this you know example system that I'm thinking of was both, if our, if our names were both listed as Iris Kohler, there'd be no way to easily differentiate us. You'd have to actually go in and try to figure out everything. And it'd be even worse if uh, that hypothetical other Iris Kohler teacher was also in the same department teaching exactly the same classes. And it's just absolutely impossible to tell the difference between the two of us. So that's why you would use something unique like an employee number as the name. Now, uh, we won't actually be using anything like a random string of numbers because, well, you know, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but names should also be kind of memorable and tell you exactly what's going on. But, you know, names are really important because it allows us to refer to objects. It allows us to say, hey, I need this particular object to do this particular thing. So we have some example code right here in uh, Visual Studio. This is in the code editor window of Visual Studio. And there are actually a number of names that we can actually see in here. Uh, one of which is the name of this actual class of uh, form main. Uh, we'll show some examples of names in a little bit, but this uh, is short for form main. It refers to the main form of the application. In Visual Basic, uh, everything, you know, at least when we're working with forms like this, everything is going to take place in a form that is displayed <coughs> to the screen. Uh, you can have multiple forms within a particular application, but the main form the one that actually handles the, the main task uh, is going to be, you know, we're going to refer to it as form main. So that's one example of a name. Uh, if you ever want to refer to this form, you know that within this application, form main is the name of this particular form. There's other names too. Uh, we have uh, button exit, we have button show, button hide, and pick equation right here. These all refer to specific objects. There's the button exit, which refers to the button that says exit. And when you click on that exit button, you actually close the form. Uh, there's button show, which actually shows the equation. By the way, this is for the um, Einstein program that I showed off before, where uh, Einstein is like, hey, what's my famous equation? And then you click show to show e equals mc squared or whatever but we have a uh, button show button hide which refers to the show and the hide buttons on that application and then you also have pick equation which is that picture of e equals mc squared in the funny text font um i also realized i forgot to put a box around pick equation dot visible over here but the reason why i have not just say button exit, but also button exit dot click is to show that 
by saying button exit, by referring to the name here, then we are able to access certain properties or um, subroutines that belong to that particular object. Uh, same with pick equation right here. Pick equation dot visible. This visible controls whether or not the uh, the equation picture is showing up on the application or whether it's invisible. So if we set it to true, it we can actually see it. And if we set it to false, we can't see it anymore. So that's what knowing the name of an object actually does, is that when we actually refer to the object by name, we can then ask that object to change a certain thing about their properties or change uh, you know perform a specific action or something like that that is why the name property is so important now you give everything a name that is going to be referred to in the code you know some something that's actually going to be used uh, if you have something just hanging out and it doesn't really do anything other than look pretty uh, like say that picture of Einstein himself you might not need to give that a name since you don't actually have um, anything to do with that Einstein picture so that Einstein picture uh, would have an empty name property it still would have a name property but it would be empty it would have nothing in it now here's are some naming conventions. Uh, some of these are actually enforced by Visual Basic, which means that if you don't follow those rules, then bad things are going to happen. Uh, some of them are the naming conventions that are used in the book and thus used in this class. For the most part, I might be familiar with um, other naming conventions, so I might slip up a little bit, but I'll try to follow these naming conventions for minimal confusion. Now, the rules that you actually have to follow each object must have a unique name, so you can't repeat names. They, they have to be unique and they can't be named as anything else. Each name must begin with a letter, so the first character of that name must be a letter, and they can only contain letters, uppercase or lowercase, numbers, and the underscore character. No special symbols, um, nothing like that. It's just letters, numbers, and the underscore character. Now in this book, uh, we're going to try to begin our uh, names with an ID of three or more characters that represents the object type. So you saw um, back here, button or pick or form that tells us exactly what type of thing the, um, the object is. So if it's if it starts with FRM, we know it's a form. If it starts with BTN, we know it's a button. Exactly, by looking at it. We we can't necessarily know this right away, you know, by default just looking at it. Uh, we have to include that information in the name, and that just makes things a lot easier to read and makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on. Um, the remaining characters will indicate the object's purpose. So we have form main, which is just the main form of the entire program. Everything happens there. That's usually what main means in the context of programming. Um, button exit means the exit button. Button show means the show button. Pick equation means the, uh, the uh, picture containing the equation E equals MC squared, and so on and so forth. And then each name will be entered using camel case. So we have multiple words concatenated into the name. Uh, all of those words, individual words, start with an uppercase, except for the first word, which starts with a lowercase letter. Um, actually, a really good example of this is text first name right here. So three words, text first name. All of the words start with an uppercase letter except for text, which starts with lowercase. Same with pick equation or label total due, check discount. All of those are in uh, lower camel case specifically is what that's called. Um, upper camel case would be if the first character was also capitalized, but no, lower camel case means the first character is lowercase 
and then the beginnings of all the other words are uppercase. That's pretty standard for any programming language. You'll mostly see people working in uh, lower camel case like this. But the uh, camel case refers to the humps created by the um, first letters of all the subsequent words right there. You have all these examples here, form main, main form. Button exit, the button that ends the application when clicked, text first name, a text box for entering a customer's first name. You could have text last name as well, or text ID num, or whatever. Uh, label total due, it's a label, it displays a total due. That would refer to the um, that interest calculator, the monthly payment calculator that I showed off in the last video, where the total due showed the amount that I had to um, pay every month and so on and so forth but that is the naming conventions that we're going to be using i'm not going to grade you down for not using this naming conventions but i highly encourage you to use these naming conventions because naming conventions like this will not only help you understand what's going on in your program you know maybe you write a program all in one shot in one day and then it's not working, so you take a break, and then five days later you come back, and you're like, oh, what is going on? What are all these things again? You know, following this naming convention is going to make things a lot easier for you. It's also going to make things a lot easier for me, especially if I'm trying to help you with your code. If you um, send me your code and you say, hey, I'm having this issue, can you please help me with this? And I don't know what is going on, it's going to take me a lot more time to actually get you the help. So naming conventions like this are really important. And that is naming objects. Um, it's really important to name the objects that you are using so that you can refer to those objects and actually use their properties and interact with them and all that kind of stuff. So very important part of Visual Basic and really in programming in general, uh, you will be naming things that you are working with. It works a lot different in other uh, programming languages, but the concept will always be the same.